have um, done panel interviews. So basically, I worked as a, um, a, a drug and alcohol advisor and um, youth worker, basically, so mm. to speak, in, in the Muslim community. So there, there are so many other things that I add value to and bring for the younger generation. And um, Do you still do that today? Or do I, you I haven't done it in, okay. in, in quite some times because um, I, I took a step back because the Muslim community... There's a sense of taboo around certain things like drugs, yeah. sex, um, mm. things like that. So um, to be honest with you, uh, I, I just took a break because um, when I would go to the Muslim community and, and teach the community about mm. substance abuse, about um, some of our, our, our young girls, Muslim young women wearing hijab or prostituting, doing ice, these things exist. Like mm. These are things that we shouldn't be silent about. Some of our young brothers are... Um, going to the mass jail, but they have uh, psychosis. They are dealing with um, thoughts of suicide. Mm -hmm. Everything is not based around a gin. And sometimes the, the drugs um, affect our minds and allow us to behave this way. So mm -hmm. everyone wants rukia every time something happens. Okay, sometimes yeah. things are not... Just pray and it'll go away. Just pray or yeah. just, <laughs> son, <laughs> or just send, send your son back to their homeland country, mm -hmm. to Somalia, or to Lebanon. That's not always the solution. So what happened is throughout my, um, this is what I did for a living. I was paid to do this, but I sacrificed my time and went to multiple communities um, doing this for free just to try to start educating yeah. our communities. And the backlash for it just became unbearable. It was almost like carrying a refrigerator on my back because it's taboo. People are uncomfortable. Yeah. People that I, I know people don't want to speak yeah. about it. Even us, sometimes there's certain topics we want to talk about. And it's like, nah, it's, it'll yeah. get too much backlash. But yeah. then what kind of understanding that we got to do what we yeah. want to do yeah, to a certain extent? And bismillah, you leave the rest to Allah, you know? Yeah, and that's kind of what happened. So I would go to these communities and parents would be angry. Mm. Oh, brother, why would you talk about this? And brother, and they, and they don't, they don't understand that these things do exist. Yeah. So, so what happened is um, the, the intentions and the efforts that I had to teach the community, mm -hmm. it became um, a negative, you know, versus like, and, and I would tell the parents, it's your responsibility to, to educate, educate yourselves on these substances that I mm -hmm. show on this projector. So you can see this is ice, this is, this is cocaine, this is this, this is that. Like this behavior, you know, could possibly be your son using one of these substances like but the 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 parents most times didn't want to talk about it and a lot of these young people were having sex and these are just things that are frowned upon in islam so exactly. so, so it's it's yeah. um the parents are majority of the time because i've seen this myself in the in the communities the parents themselves are like what's the word they just deny it? Or? Yeah. They, 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 they deny it. They sleep yeah. in the rug. Like, I know particular guys where, like, they'd come home and they'll be off their head, off their face. Yeah. And I, alhamdulillah, I've never used in my life, but I, I've seen people use, I've seen people, how they are after they've used. And I see him come home or I see him knocking on his house door and I'm, I'm thinking, this guy, how are you going to go home in that state? But the mum will think automatically, someone gave my son drugs. Mm. It, was, uh, it wasn't something he'd done It was somebody else's fault It's it, they're, they're in a state of denial Where they believe their kid Due to me teaching him ABC morals When he was five years old He would never do drugs so or Taking I, so him to an Islamic school yeah. Or taking him to a Saturday school for two hours <laughs> Yeah, every know? single week <laughs> Or, you know, all of that He uh, Like, you know, he, he fasts and he prays All that he, she, He's a good kid, he wouldn't do that yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I think just to interject on that, my apologies for cutting you off. One of the biggest mistakes that I've seen that has been counterproductive is always taking that young person, shipping him to yeah. your homeland country. Because what <laughs> happens is that this young person was raised in Australia. Hmm. The young person grew up, is growing up under the, um, the culture in Australia. So, yeah, this person may be, I'm just going to say for conversation purposes, Somali. This person may be of Somali descent, ethnic background, but the pers this young person didn't grow up in Somalia. Yeah. So what you're doing is removing this person from their, um, their, the, the country that they're growing up in, and you're sending them through a place where they, they have an identity, but they, 
right. don't have an attachment because they didn't grow up there. Mm. But their identity is is a part of that. So the the young people and I and I've said this because I've seen hundreds of clients and some people can say, oh, you know, it worked for me. It worked. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of clients that it's the opposite. It makes it worse and because they rebel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, rebel and it's not like in Somalia there's no drugs. Correct. There's drugs everywhere. <laughs> it's not like oh, yeah, I'm gonna chuck you in a plane, take you to some random village in Somalia, yeah. and you're gonna be drug free. Yeah. They end up coming back worse than they actually yeah. left. That's yeah, the worst because they, they meet some guy. Okay, it's like there's a Somali kid from Melbourne that will leave, Somali kid from Sydney <coughs> that will leave, Somali kid from the UK and the US, and they all go back to the same village, and all of them have the same issue. Exactly. There's eight of them now, and then <laughs> they back around the same people yeah. they had in Australia. So it's just yeah. I mean, the the shipping shipping a young person away doesn't address the drug and alcohol situation. Yeah. It doesn't address the. There's always bottom underlying things that, um, that allow that f pushes this young person to experiment, mm -hmm. and it could be um, you know, just just it, it's a lot of times there's um abuse in the home. Yeah. Some of the young men, they, they've, they've been, you know, um, witnessed violence and domestic violence from the father mm -hmm. in the home quite often. The young girls have been sexually abused by a family member. These are things that I would hear often that led to this young person experimenting. Of course. And th there's very, there's few, uh, few times where the young person is, is, is influenced by peer pressure. Most of the time, it's an underlining issue that... Internal? Internal. It comes so from it domestic violence. It yeah. comes from mm. you know sexual, uh, being sexually yeah. abused. Mm. It comes from. Um, I never knew that. I was a lot that. of things like I like based friends, around that. Yeah, I friends do have a play, but friends do have a. It's always it's, it can be influence. fifty fifty instead of people what they always say oh, yeah. bad friends yeah. bad friends exactly mm. you can um, have bad friends and you have underlying issues but those underlying issues with the bad friends correct mm. like trigger that like certain action to occur. Yeah. Mm. So w after your years of experience, what kind of things do people do to, as a, like a way to try to cope with the issue? Rehabilitate, you know, yeah, yeah, rehabilitation. But like obviously it depends on the circumstances. So what kind of things is at least more likely to work?